Good morning. morning. It's good to be here this morning, and it's good to see you all here this morning as well. This is so much easier to do when there are other folk in the room with you. (laughs) Um, As we gather this morning and we prepare ourselves for this time together, I would like to draw your attention to the announcements that are in your bulletin here. Uh, Some I'd like to to kind of target and lift up for you. One is a reminder that on July 12th, uh, there's going to be an organizational meeting for the... uh, church garage sale. So if you're involved with that, take a moment to look through that particular announcement to see where you're supposed to be and and all that goes with that. Um, I confess last hour that uh, the next announcement there seems a little bit self-serving for me to make, um, but I'm okay with that. We're going to make it anyway. Name tags. If you all wear name tags, it really, really helps me. It makes me look so good (laughs) when I can shake your hand and call you by name. Uh, without you realizing I'm reading it while I do it. Um, so you can really help me out uh, by, with the name tags. Now the day comes that I say your name before you say mine. You know you don't need it for me, but there may be other guests among us that it's still a benefit for. Uh, so that would be a big help. If you don't have a name tag, or if you're a magnet, I understand some of the magnets decide to take a vacation separate from the rest of the name tag. If that has happened to you, I understand there's a way to either get your name tag replaced or the magnets replaced. Uh, there's a sign-up board over here around the corner, or you can grab one of the folk down at the office and let them know what's needed with that. Uh, so thanks for your help with that. Also note, uh, save the date, July 19th. It's going to be the outdoor worship service. Uh, so you can make a note that on that, if that particular day, if you come here at this time, you will have your choice of any seat in the house. Because the rest of us are going to be out yonder uh, with that. So take note of that particular time. Um, There's also uh, some information there about a caregiver uh, support group. You can take note of that and the times when that is uh, with that as well. Um, The pink insert. Uh, Take note of that, if you would, this Wednesday. uh, Vacation Bible School always seems like, oh, that's going to happen in the summer. That's this Wednesday it begins. Uh, And from what Ashley has said, there's still ample opportunity for folk to participate, either with materials, with leadership, with support, a whole bunch of opportunities still exist with that. So take a chance to look through this, and if you have questions or if you uh, feel yourself moved to be a part of that, you can get a hold of Ashley after services here, and she'll help you get connected with what you need to be connected to for that. Any other announcements that we need to hear this morning? Okay. Let's prepare ourselves then for our time of worship. Good morning. I don't know that Dave, Pastor Dave is necessarily going to follow the lectionary today, but one of the Bible passages for this week comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, and it seems to be relevant today with this being Pastor Dave's first Sunday in, in the pulpit with us. In that passage, Paul's words are an encouragement to the Corinthians to push ahead in their efforts to make a gift to the church in Jerusalem. Now, if uh, Cousin Tilly was very accurate last week when she told us that uh, this congregation loves to hear about money and tithing, well, uh, Pastor Dave could hit it out of the park if he were to preach on this particular passage today. But uh, quite apart from what he actually does preach on, Paul's words speak to us in another way. The whole idea of supporting the church in Jerusalem was that the Corinthians had plenty this year, and as Paul says, it's only fair that you should help those who are in need. Then when you are in need and they have plenty, they will help you. It sounds like a mutual aid society or an insurance policy where one farmer may be hit with hail this year and another farmer may be hit with hail next year. Our Iowa conference creates similar types of interdependence among us with the system of apportionments and itinerant assignment of pastors. We sometimes worry that we're giving more than we're receiving, but we shouldn't think of this in terms of just dollars and cents. We also can think of our interdependence in terms of personnel. 
we're fortunate to be welcoming Pastor Dave as a seasoned pastor, not just one out of seminary, because he's been trained up by those charges in Conrad and Emmitsburg and Belle Plaine, where he served before. We can thank our sister churches for helping shape the experiences that Dave brings to us today. We may pray to ourselves and feel that we're in a period of time with too much change as a congregation, and we may wish the world would just stand still for a little while. That doesn't seem to be what God has in store for us. Let us instead see the opportunity in those changes, especially how we as a congregation, together with guidance from Pastor Dave, can live out the vision of a Christian community prepared for the future, not one locked in the past. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the message from St. Paul to recognize how can we can be the support team and insurance policy for each other in this church and in the church worldwide. We appreciate those charges where Pastor Dave has served before coming to Grinnell, and we pray that your Holy Spirit may guide us both in hearing your call and acting on it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand if you are able for our call to worship. Glorious God, source of joy and righteousness, grant that what we sing with our lips and what we believe in our hearts so that being doers of the word and not hearers only, we may receive everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, the hymn of promise, number 707 in the United Methodist Hymnal. You may be seated. Please join me in the opening prayer. Healing, grace granting God, help us to look to you in times of trouble and questioning. When others ask, where is your God? Let us hold firm in our faith, responding in love, ensuring that everyone that God rejoices with us in good times 
and enfolds us with his love in bad times. Let us be assured that there is dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to us and praise to you. At this time, we'd like to invite the children to come forward with some time for Pastor Dave. good that's good to hear I know about you guys but every so often especially when I was about your age it seemed like things would break and somehow my hands or my feet were close to it when it broke <laughs> ever happened to you ever happened to you yeah. yeah things do break and when they breaks you got to figure out a way to fix it don't you how do you fix stuff when it breaks Lots of glue. Sometimes that works well. Sometimes it can be the super glue or gorilla glue or maybe it's just hot glue or some way if you get enough in there. Sometimes the pieces hold together. Sometimes the glue is not enough. What do you do then? Sometimes you got to get out the tape, don't you? And you wrap it. And, ra and if it's really a bad break, you may even get the duct tape out. <laughs> and you go to town with that, trying to hold it all together. But what if what breaks is not a thing? What if it's you? You're running, you trip, you fall, you scrape the knee. Band-Aids. Because the super glue isn't going to be a good idea then, is it? Or in the duct tape, eh, maybe not so much, but... One of these might work. One of those might work. But what if when you fell, you landed so hard, you didn't just scrape the knee, you broke the arm? And the doctor's probably going to put a cast on it, maybe give you a sling. There's a lot of things we can do when stuff breaks, and we can do some fixing. We're going to hear a Bible story about a guy who was broken. Only Band-Aids weren't going to work. Duct tape hadn't been invented yet. A cast wasn't going to work. But in the story, Jesus comes to talk with him. And Jesus brings to him the thing that he needed to be fixed. And that thing that Jesus brings is God's grace and God's love. And somehow, when the doctors couldn't make it work, and they couldn't do anything else to try to get things fixed, when Jesus gave God's love, he was fixed, and he was whole, and he could walk again. That same Jesus offers to do that for us. So sometimes when we are too afraid to think straight, when we're so afraid all we can do is curl up and hope everything would go away, or we're so angry all we want to do is throw something, or when we're so sad because something important to us has broken, Jesus reminds us, if you trust me, if you're willing to take my hand, I can fix even that. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let me invite you guys to join hands. You want to join us? There we go. Everybody hook a hand, and we're going to say a prayer. Okay? Dear God, thank you so much for caring enough to want to fix us when we are feeling broken and we don't know what to do about it. Thank you for being there and putting us back together again. Amen. Thanks. squeeze the gospel reading in in the wrong place. <laughs> in today's gospel reading from the chapter from John chapter 5 in the Living Bible, Jesus 
heals a man who had waited so long to be made whole. But when the Jewish leaders saw the healed man carrying his mat, they didn't rejoice at the healing. They chastised the man for disobeying one of their restrictive laws. Afterwards, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish religious holidays. Inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was Bethesda Pool, with five covered platforms or porches surrounding it. Crowds of sick folks, lame, blind, or with paralyzed limbs, lay on the platforms waiting for a certain movement of the water. For an angel of the Lord came from time to time and disturbed the water, and the first person to step down into it afterwards was healed. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew how long he had been ill, he asked him, would you like to get well? I can't, the sick man said, for I have no one to help me into the pool at the movement of the water. While I am trying to get there, someone else always gets in front of me. Jesus told him, stand up, roll up your sleeping mat, and go home. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up the mat and began walking. But it was on the Sabbath when this miracle was done, so the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was cured, you can't work on the Sabbath. It's illegal to carry that sleeping mat. The man who healed me told to was his reply. Who said, su who said such a thing as that, they demanded? The man didn't know, and Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. But afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, now you are well, don't sin as you did before, or something even worse may happen to you. Then the man went to find the Jewish leaders and told them it was Jesus who had healed him. So they began harassing Jesus as a Sabbath breaker. But Jesus replied, my father constantly does good and I'm following his example. Then the Jewish leaders were all the more eager to kill him because in addition to disobeying their Sabbath laws, he had spoken of God as his father, thereby making him equal with God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And now we have the gift of music with Sarah and Lilla, Lily Hamilton. You can find this, the words for this music in uh, your Black Faith. We sing hymnals 2107. are gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. Gods are gonna trouble the water. Look over yonder, what do I see? Gods are gonna trouble the water. The Holy Spirit are coming on me. God's are gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's are gonna trouble the water. If you don't believe I've been redeemed, God's are gonna trouble the water. Just follow me down to Jordan stream. God's are gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. God's are gonna trouble the water.
Last hour, I told Sarah, Sarah and Lily that at this point, what I feel I need to do is just say amen and sit down. They haven't changed my mind. A lot has gone on this past week in our personal lives, in our community, in the nation, around the world. A lot has gone on. And in the midst of all of it comes this Jesus. And he brings with him the compelling question, do you want to get well? That's one of those obvious questions that brings with it its own answer. It's kind of like being in the doctor's office and the reception asks, would you like to see the doctor now? Well, yeah, that's kind of why we're here. If he did not want to get well, if the man that Jesus was talking to truly did not want to get well, I doubt he would have laid by that pool for 38 years. But there is more to Jesus' question than just the obvious. For 38 years, this man has laid next to the pool that the scholars have described as being a special place, a place of healing for the Greek god Ecclesiastes. And for 38 years, he and everybody else who had gathered there had been laying there waiting for just that right opportunity, when the waters would move. But for 38 years, this man had been there, but I was frustrated because, you see, it's only the first one in that actually gets healed. And the only way that was going to happen for him, since he couldn't walk, was that if everybody just waited, or if they helped him be the first one. Neither one of those was going to happen, because everybody else around that pool was there with their own needs, their own fears, their own dreams, that they were all there working on as well. And so when the waters moved, first one in. And so for 38 years, that man remained there in his brokenness, physically, emotionally, spiritually. It was on one of those days, though, that this Jesus enters into the story. When he found the man there, he didn't come up and ask him, do you believe that I can do this? He just simply asked him, do you want to be well? The word well here is the Greek word sozo. It means to be whole, to be saved, to be restored back into that right relationship with God. Jesus was asking this man as he lay there beside the pool, do you want to be saved? Do you want to be restored? Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be that right relationship with God, the person that God created you to be? No relief of any of your symptoms or your ailments is going to accomplish that, but do you want to be well? For the man to become whole, it means he would be restored, recreated, made anew. And it's going to affect every relationship that he had and all the people in those relationships. You know, the thing about human relationships and all the systems that they create around them is that they were going to work really hard about maintaining themselves and preserving themselves. Which is why when, when there's a set of relationships that, that depends upon somebody being cared for, when that person actually gets well, that system of relationships will actually go to work to help them become unwell so that they have reason and purpose and direction in their shared life together. And if that's not possible, well then it will work to make somebody else unwell so that they, they can do what it is they've learned to do for one another, and that's to care and to maintain and look after. This man, if he said, yes, I want to be well, means that he was going to impact a number of people and he was going to be upsetting the way that they had learned to make their world work together. It's one of the reasons when somebody goes on the walk to Emmaus and you had that incredible experience and you come back to your local church setting, you have scheduled times to get together with folk again in order to, to keep in touch with, with the experience that you had because when you come back into a setting where other folk haven't, there is that, that subtle but nearly irresistible pressure to go back to being the way things were before you, you went on the, on the walk. If this man said yes, if this man agreed to be well and whole, 
everybody around him was going to be impacted and there would be the pressure for things to be as they always have been. Now often one way that we go about avoiding that pressure is that when there's that opportunity for things to change to be different, we can start coming up with the excuses. Now in this particular story, the man's excuse was, do you want to be well? Well, yeah, but I just can't do it. I can't walk. I can't get there. Everybody else beats me. I'll never get there. I'll never be first. So yeah, I'd like to be well, but it's not never going to happen. I, 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 just, I just can't do it. We've got our own excuses. Sometimes what we'll say is, just don't have time for that. Well, actually, we have all the time we need because we will make time for what's important to us. But we'll say we don't have time. Or we maybe it's, it's we've tried that once before. Or we've never done that before. Or just too tired, can't afford it, too risky. The list goes on and on. You know your list, and you could go ahead and play that out for yourself. But the reality is that if we don't receive that gift of God's restorative grace, if we remain broken, even if what our wholeness requires is only an arm's reach away, one conversation away from us, one relationship to be mended and it would all be good, if we don't accept that gift of restorative grace, then right there we remain beside our pool, broken, unhealed. William Sloan Coffin Jr. writes in his book, The Courage to Be Well, these words. I'm driving at what I think is the central problem of the Christian church in America today. Most of us fear the cure more than the illness. Most of us prefer the plausible lie that we can't be cured to the fantastic truth that we can be. And there's a reason. If it's torture to be guilty, it's certainly scarier to be responsible, response-able, able to respond to God's visionary and creative love. No longer paralyzed, our arms would be free to embrace the outcast and the enemy, the most confirmed addict. No longer paralyzed, our feet would be free to walk out of any job that is harmful to others and meaningless to us free even to walk that lonesome valley without fear of evil. Everything is possible to those whose eyes no longer fixed on some status symbol or other are held instead by the gaze of him who can dispense freedom in life and measures unheard of. Do you want to be well? Being well doesn't mean that life quits hurting. Being well doesn't mean we're no longer afraid. Being well doesn't mean we're no longer voiceless or powerless or in positions where we can't decide what all the outcomes are going to be. But it does mean that we live and we love and we serve as Christ does. It means that we choose to be response-able. It means that instead of hate and violence, life and the people in it are met with grace and forgiveness. Whether we are addressing religious, social, political, or economic differences, we don't require people to be like us or even to think like us or to agree with us. We recognize that, like us, they are broken and need that gift of wholeness, the so-so that Christ brings. There's an old Chinese proverb about a woman whose son had died, and she was just absolutely devastated by that loss. And in her grief, she went to talk to, to a holy man, and she asked him, what prayers, what magic incantations do you have that can bring my son back to me? Instead of just sending her away or, or trying to reason her through, that can't happen. What he tells her is, fetch me a mustard seed from a house that has never known sorrow. And we will use that to drive the sorrow out of your life. So at once she took off looking for some place, some home that has never known sorrow that she could find that mustard seed. And so the first place she came to was this, this really splendid mansion. It was huge. It was, it was impeccable. All, all the flowers even grew to the same height down in the front. Not a weed to be found. 
And so she knocks on the door, figured this has got a place that has never known sorrow. And so when the door is answered, she asks that person, has this place ever had any sorrow in it? I really need to know. And the individual at the door said, man, have you knocked on the wrong door? And they proceeded to tell them everything that has happened to those who live there and all the pain and the anguish that they had experienced. And as she listened to those stories, she began to think, who could take better care of these folk than myself? Because I know what this pain is like. And so she stayed and she spent some time comforting them, nurturing them, until finally they were able to find some peace. And then she left there and went to another home looking. And it found that no matter whether it was a hovel or whether it was a palace, every time she knocked on the door, she got the response, oh, you won't believe what we have been through. And so home after home, she spent time caring for, bringing comfort and nurturing until there was peace in that house and she went on to the next. And it ultimately, in time, she became so busy caring and nurturing other people's pains and griefs, she forgot about seeking the mustard seed, not realizing that that was the point, that that mythical, magical mustard seed in its search had healed her. And she found the wholeness, the love, the power, the transformation that she was seeking. She was well. Do you want to be well? Publicly, I'd say the answer because of the way that you all have worked on your natural church development and the way that as a congregation you embrace the results of that endeavor, that the answer is yes, you want to be well. I would say from the generous and selfless ways that the folk of this community and this congregation have welcomed Beth and I into their midst, that yes, you want to be well. And you want to share the wellness. But Jesus asks us in those private places in our lives, in those broken places in our lives, where there is pain and there is uncertainty, there is unquenchable worry, and fear. Do you want to be well and whole? Do you want to be the person and in the relationship with God that you were created to be? Are you willing to embrace all that that means? Know that the Jesus who stood beside the pool on that day the same Jesus who stands next to you, ready to receive your answer with that same gift of healing, restoring, saving grace. And because of that, because of that, we can be well if we but accept the gift. And as we accept that gift, we find that we can stand when we thought we could not. We can pick up that mat, whether it's our worry about this or our fear about that. We can pick it up, roll it away, tuck it under our arm, and we can walk into life. And as we do so, we become the very witness to the rest of this world. There is hope. And it's not found in some stirring mystical water. It's not found in empty promises. It's found in the Christ. Do you want to be well? You see, our answer doesn't just affect us. It affects the world in which we live and the world to which we are sent. Do you want to be well? By God's grace, may we find the courage to say, oh yes. And we stand and we walk. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able that we can join in our and our hymn, number 2173, you'll find that in the faith we sing.
This is the time in our, in our worship that uh, we can share uh, the joys and the cares we've brought with us from this past week. Uh, those times when we're looking for someone just to share a heck of a good story and reason to dance, uh, dance whether it's literally or figuratively, together in the celebration of life, but also those loads that we bring, the burdens that weigh us down, uh, the cares. Are there joys and concerns you'd like to share today? There are some printed in your bulletin. Uh, you can look through those. Uh, would lift up also from last hour, we had um, uh, a joy that was lifted up, and that was the 50th wedding anniversary of Earl and Pam. Forgive me if I don't get the last names just yet, uh, but you're nodding, so if you don't know who Earl and Pam are, talk to one of the folk who are nodding right now. <laughs> uh, we also had a young man, Alex, that was lifted up who had had a dirt bike accident and had a fractured leg uh, and is mending from that. Um, I think she shared it was broken in five places. Uh, and there's going to be some time of healing uh, for that young man with that. So she is asking for, for prayers for that. Uh, also, Del Doss. If you'd hold Dell in your prayers, uh, he's dealing with some health concerns right now as well. Are there any other joys or cares you'd like to share this morning? Yes. Congratulations to you. <laughs> the power of name tags. <laughs> Thank you for making me look good. Are there others? Yes. Is that Glenn? Len. Glenn, okay. I can't see his name tag. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Are there others? Yes. Are there others? Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we do give you our thanks for the gift of this day and, and for the gift of this place where we can gather together, not only to be with one another, but to be reassured that you are with us as well. We come this day lifting up before you the reasons we have for dancing in joy with that gift of life. We join with the news of, of wedding anniversaries with Earl and Pam as they celebrate their 50th um, and with Jim and Kim as they celebrate their 34th. We also celebrate that gift of, gift of life uh, with um, Glenn and Catherine as they celebrate the, the birth of their uh, new little one and, and with uh, Tucker, baby Tucker. Um, we also hold him up as uh, he remains in the hospital and dealing with, with the matters that are before him as well. Lord, we, Beth and I give our thanks for the opportunity and the joy of being in, in this community with this congregation. And we lift up um, the upcoming Vacation Bible School and for all the young folk that will be a part of that, but also the, the, the taller folk who are going to be a part of that and ask your blessings upon them as well. And Lord, sometimes, um, sometimes life is big enough that uh, we do need you in order for us to be able to find our way through and to carry um, different parts of that, that experience. And so... We, we lift up uh, Cynthia and Kevin and Verl and Earl and, and Virgil, uh, and we know that you understand what their needs are, and, and we place them in, into the care of your hands. Um, Lord, we, we hold Nathan uh, Triblett and, and pray that he might find uh, the comfort and, and the solace that he needs at the, at the, the sudden death of, uh, of Deborah. We pray that Alec might find the healing he needs for, for his leg. Lord, we pray that for those whose lives are torn apart by violence, that they might find, um, they might find peace. 
whether that be strife within families or between nations. For those who are struggling with, with that uh, not so visible uh, illness, uh, with the mental health that, that um, in spite of that not being quite so visible to the rest of us, that they too might find the wholeness that they, that they require. Lord, we hold up uh, Jackie Harris and her family um, in the time of Greece, the losses of her mother, uh, and Monique uh, Shore and her family at the time in the, of her uncle's death. Lord, we lift up those who are in ministries of, of sharing and, and, and caring, and, and we pray that their, their efforts and their words uh, be blessed in those endeavors as well. And for those with long-term needs, um, Dennis and Darlene and, and Peyton and, and Barb um, that, and Yuan might, might all find um, the strength as well as the comfort that those particular needs require. Lord, we lift up all of these things and those things that you also hold upon our hearts and we place them into your hands and with full confidence that you have heard those prayers. We pray as we can talk. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Um, now, last week Tilly did give us at least gave me some, in, some instructions and advice when it comes to church and money. I have not forgotten that. Uh, Jack did make a reference uh, in, in the centering time that, that um, Paul, when he wrote to the folk at uh, Corinth, that uh, he had some instructions when it comes to money. Um, at annual conference, one of the highlights is always the worship services there. And in one of the worship services there, um, some of our, our pastors and, and congregants who have immigrated to this country from Africa shared one of their experiences when it comes to, to worship, uh, and that the highlight, the thing that everybody just can't wait for in the time of worship is the offering. Uh, and when it comes time for the offering, it's not a matter of just passing the plate or, or walking up and dropping something in a basket at the front. It is such a joyful, enthusiastic time for them. They fill the aisles and they literally dance their way to the front to leave their gifts. And they invited all 1,600 to 2,000 of us Iowan Methodists to join them in the aisles and dancing to the front to leave our offerings for that worship service. Now, we all went to the aisle, but for some of us the dance was about like this. <laughs> Others were far braver and they literally s made visible the joy what it comes when you take what God has blessed you with and you offer it back. I am not going to ask you to dance to the front. <laughs> I will not stop you if you choose to. <laughs> but as the ushers now do wait on us, this is a time when we can joyfully offer back to God the blessings that we have received.
us pray together. All things come from you, O God, and with praise and thanksgiving, we return to you what is yours. You created all that is, and with love formed us in your image. When our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior, that we might have abundant and eternal life. All that we are and all that we have is a trust from you. And so, in gratitude for all that you have done, we offer ourselves and all that we have in union with Christ's offering for us. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn you'll find on page number 98. Do you want to be well? Know that all that cannot be fixed with super glue and duct tape, your Christ stands ready to care for. Do you want to be well? As you leave this place now to go forth into this world, know your God has chosen to wrap God's love around you, to hold your life and world together. Know that Christ your Savior has chosen to walk with you and that God's own Spirit sustains you. You go from this place as a witness to this world that we have hope, we have life. You are sent from here in Christ's name. 
go and go joyfully. Amen.